Okay, good evening everyone and welcome to tonight's Board of Ed meeting. The date is Tuesday, March 27, 2018. And I want to remind you that this meeting is being recorded and to please turn off your cell phones. Ellen, can you please do the roll call? Thank you, Mrs. Granado. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Cassio? Present. Mrs. Fitzpatrick? Present. Mr. Healy? Ms. McCurdy? Here. Ms. Moon? Here. Mr. Morris? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Present. Vice Chairperson Mr. Hill? Here. Chairperson Mrs. Granado? Present. And Weathersfield High School Student Representative Mr. Justin Bianchi? Present. All present. Thank you, Ellen. I want to invite a group from the Highcrest School to come on up and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Okay, thank you, and thank you from the staff from Highcrest. Thanks for bringing them. Okay, Mr. Emmett, I understand that we have two recognitions tonight. We do. We have two staff student recognitions this evening. Mrs. Granado, if I could please have our friends from Highcrest Elementary School come forward for a presentation on PBIS. So thank you for having us tonight. As you know, Highcrest School and many of the schools in, in Weathersfield participate in the PBIS program. And one of the parts about Highcrest PBIS program is that we monthly focus on a character trait. So today I have some wonderful staff members and students here to present about their sharing character trait of the month, which they recently did last month. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Sue Brush, and I'm a second grade teacher at Highcrest Elementary. I'm here with my two colleagues, Marilee Dijon and Sarah Myers, um, along with some other very important guests. And we would like to tell you a little bit about a recent community service project that we did as a part of our PBIS initiative at Highcrest. Hello, everyone. I'm not quite as tall as Sue Brush, so I'm just going to adjust this a little bit. <laughs> um, Marilee Dijon. Um, PBIS, if you don't know the acronym, is Positive Behavior Intervention Supports. And part of what we do, and we've been doing it for about four or five years now, is supporting students in a positive way. And one of the ways we were doing, as Mrs. O'Connor mentioned, is through our monthly um, character traits. So we've been uh, focusing on traits like perseverance and honesty and sharing. So you'll see uh, Mrs. Myers is gonna tell you a little bit about sharing and what we did and then present the kids. Hello, Sarah Myers. Um, so we've brought three of our um, little friends with us today and um, we have created a PowerPoint um, presentation for you and they will tell you all about it and explain everything that second graders at Highcrest School have done to show sharing in the community. Sharing means using or enjoying something with others. There are many different ways to share, and sharing can mean different things to different people. We can share our toys, crayons, books, and lunch. We can even share our time with others. Sharing can also make you feel different things. It can make you feel proud, helpful, important, and happy. We have put together a slideshow to show you what we have learned about sharing and what sharing means to us. We hope you like it. We watched the video to learn about sharing at lunch. <coughs> We read a book to lunch thief to reinforce our understandings. This book was about a boy who was taking other kids' lunch because he had nothing to eat. We wrote about what these issues mean to us. How would you feel if you had to re rely on a stranger to provide your lunch every day? How does, it, how does it feel when you are hungry and you have to wait to eat? What are some ways to help those that are hungry? We wrote about what these issues mean to us. Sharing is when you share your lunch with people and it makes them happy. Sharing is when you give food to the homeless people. 
Students overwhelmingly wanted to provide food and necessities for those in need. We collected items on South Park <coughs> in, in wish list during the month of February. Our entire school helped and we collected eight boxes of items. Mm. Sixth graders and parents helped to sort out the enormous amounts of donations we received. We also made 100 sandwiches with our own two hands. Every student <laughs> in each classroom made sandwiches in order to complete the circle of understanding. Now we know what it is like to share and give a part of ourselves to someone else. Here is Ms. Brush's, Mrs. Brush's class making sandwiches for the homeless. Here is Ms. Dijon's class making sandwiches for the homeless. Here is Ms. Meyer's class making sandwiches for the homeless. When we dropped off our donations to the shelter, a little boy was standing outside the door with his family. What was he most excited about? A toothbrush. Many thanks to those who provided help with this project. Let's be grateful for all that we have and make sure to always share when you can. Please enjoy second graders at Highcrest singing We Are the World. So part of our monthly presentation is that our second grade class and sixth grade, depending on what month it is, they all get together and they show Highcrest community and parents are also invited about their character trait of the month. So this is them practicing what they did for their school-wide celebration. So I just want to say thank you to our wonderful students, Bren <laughs> Brenna, Grace, and Jacob for their, their work tonight. They did a great job. So we give them a round of applause. This is really hard for them. <laughs> and also thank you to our grade two team. They really took this project to heart. And to, just to see the deliveries and the looks on the faces, I know it was very powerful for all of them. And just a round of applause for them, because they really did a great job. Can I just say one thing? Without the support of Mrs. O'Connor, she was very instrumental. She gave us the name of the site and was 100% behind everything we did. Great. Thank you. Thank you. The Highcrest School, on behalf of the board, thank you very much. Second grade at Highcrest School. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other comments? Thank you. At this point in time, we have some friends here from Hanmer Elementary School. Can you come on up?
Hi, my name is Laura Veda. I'm a sixth grade teacher at Hanmer Elementary. Um, my students are here to present a little bit about what we've been doing in our science class this year and most recently the project that we're working on um, as a district initiative is to incorporate more of the next generation science standards into our teaching. Um, I asked my students when an email from Ms. Greer came out that said who would like to present to the board, I said would you guys like to present? And many more students raised their hands that they wanted to participate tonight, but unfortunately they couldn't come. So everyone who wanted to gave up their lunches, came in, put together this presentation. This is all them. Um, so they want to present and tell you a little bit about our science class. How science is different here. We'll start off our science units with a phenomenon, something that we can't easily explain. After that, we make a model with our science groups on what happened during the phenomenon. Then we go back and come up with theories of why the phenomenon did what it did. Once we have an idea on how the phenomenon was caused, we participate in investigations with our science group and do research that we can get, make an improved model. In the end of our science unit, we repeat the process and start off with a new phenomenon as our main focus. <coughs> We are currently working on an engineering design project building a weather station. In this project, the sixth graders are trying to make instruments to see what weather will be like in one week. To see what weather will be like, we have to build certain instruments through this. All weather instruments are different, like the barometer and anemometer are very different because the barometer measures atmospheric pressure and the anemometer measures wind speed. We're learning about this because of how it ties into our phenomenons and other class projects. This also helps us with learning and understanding weather. One of the biggest things that this project teaches us is how to be more self-sufficient. This is important because in a way we're already working into college and say you want to become a meteorologist, this will give you some background knowledge on that supposed topic. This is the first step to our weather unit project in our science class. As a whole class and as a part of the first step, we also examined real weather reports meteorologists delivered to sprout and spark ideas on what vocabulary and information we can throw into our project. Then we collected significant research to guide us with the knowledge needed for our instrument. We needed to gather this information to impact on our data, notes, and background knowledge for the project to help us grow as sixth grade scientists. Stage two, building the instrument. Well, bring in the materials. If you don't bring in the materials, then how are you supposed to build the instrument out of nothing? <laughs> Step two, at home, look up how to build your instrument and figure out how to use it. Cause if you don't know how to build it or use it the next day, you like would have to figure out everything there and that would use up a lot of class time. Step three, then bring your materials you need to build it and to build it, then you work out how to build it. Because if you don't do that step, then you just be left with a pile of materials. <laughs> and yeah. uh, this is some of the list of materials we needed: a uh, wa watch or timer, felt tip markers, sharpened pencils with erasers, and stapler. Those are just some of the materials we needed. And if we could not provide for some of the instru some of the materials needed for the instruments, we asked a teacher or a person from our group. Our third stage is testing and redesigning. Our first step is after building the instrument is to make sure how it works by using it in the classroom and or by taking it outside. Our second step is to test how it works because if you don't know how it works, then you would just be using it for no reason. <laughs> Our third step is to add adjustments tweak it up so that the instrument would work while working. Um, our fourth step is to be sure what materials they used, such as plates, straws, and cups. And maybe they'll try a different material. Our fifth step is to collaborate with other group members for more <coughs> ideas to make the instrument better. Our sixth step is to finalize our design and test it all over again.
An example of one of the instruments we built was nanometer. Nanometer measures wind speed in said miles per hour. The formula used to find wind speed in said miles per hour is the revolutions per minute times the diameter of the nanometer times point zero zero three or three thousandths. Uh, these are two examples of a barometer. A barometer measures the pressure of the air. For example, if the stick goes up, that means the air has rising pressure. When the pressure is in the air is high, that means there should be a possibility of the next day to be cold. If the stick goes down, that means there's falling pressure. When there's low pressure in the air, that means that there's a possibility it will be a warmer day. To make a barometer, you need a glass jar, a tin can, a 12-inch round balloon, popsicle sticks, rubber bands, tape, a big index card, preferably 5 by 7 and scissors. Here are some pictures of the instruments. A wind vane would measure how, which way the wind was blowing, and a rain gauge would <coughs> measure how much precipitation there is in inches. We put the weather instruments outside to test them and see if they worked. If they didn't work, we made adjustments to make them work. If they worked, we recorded them on our data table for four or five days. Stage five, creating and presenting a weather report. In our presentation, students had to include information on the instruments that meteorologists use to collect weather and how they work. The groups had to make sure the work was evenly split between the group members and they worked collaboratively. S students were able to choose how they wanted to present their weather report. These were some of the choices. We are currently in stage five of our um, projects. They are building their weather reports right now. Many are using Google Slideshow. Some are gonna make iMovies. Um, we, they really are showing that they learned a lot about weather-related concepts um, through this engineering design process. So I really would just like to give a round of applause and big congratulations to my students for putting together tonight's presentation. Congratulations to all of you, and is it Scott Haney? He better watch out. <laughs> that was excellent, and I would love to be invited in, and I'm sure exactly. other board members to see the presentations when they do them. Sure. Would love it. Okay. Congratulations, everyone. All right, we'll continue the meeting under action items tonight. Um, Diane, would you read recommended motion 6A for us? Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, everyone. I got ahead of myself. Yes. We didn't need to. You were blown away by the anemometer explanation. I know. All right, so next on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes of the regular Board of Ed meeting on March 13th, 2018. Are there any corrections? Okay, seeing none, may I have a motion? So moved. Okay, second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? I oh. abstain. So noted. Okay. Those minutes are approved. Okay. Now, moving along in the right sequence, is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Please come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that public comments are limited to five minutes. Hi, my name is Sarah Bello. I live at 311 Hartford Avenue. 
and I'm currently a sophomore at Weathersfield High School. In recent years, there has been a drastic increase in the number of mass shootings and gun-related crimes, many of these occurring in or on school campuses. Students around the world have begun to partake in protests in an attempt to send a message to legislators who have the power to generate true change. At the last scheduled walkout protest on March 14th, a vigil was held to replace a walkout. This was a wonderful idea, however, I feel it was inappropriate for that day. My hope is that you will work with students in high school administration to organize a true walkout protest on April 20th, the 19th anniversary of the Columbine shooting. What we're asking is that you would allow all students who support gun reform to be allowed to peacefully exit the building and congregate on school grounds for 17 minutes. Students would carry signs and choose a location to join together. Our hope is to display that we're coming together for a cause. As students, we understand it's important to pick our battles, and this is a battle many students feel passionately about, and we will choose to raise our voice in support of stricter gun control. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Zoe Cleveland of 45 Knott Street, and I'm a sophomore at Weathersfield High School. I hope everyone is having a great afternoon or evening. <laughs> I just want to start off by thanking everyone on the Board of Education. I really appreciate what you've done for our schools and the work that you put in every day to keep this town running, including late night meetings and reading agendas every week. I'm here tonight to talk about something that you have all heard about in the news. As you all know, a tragedy occurred on February 14, 2018. 17 innocent lives were lost, and there was a way to prevent this. As a student, I believe I have the right to go to school every day without the fear of not living through the day. So as students, we need to come together and show our lawmakers that we want change. I realize that this won't happen overnight, but as the next generation of American citizens, we have a responsibility to show our lawmakers what we want. One step in achieving this task is showing that students care. On April 20th, the 19th anniversary of Columbine, students all over the nation will be walking out of their schools and sharing 17 minutes of silence for each life lost, life lost in the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas shooting. What I ask today is that students in our high school are able to do the same, that the administration permits students to leave the building and peacefully congregate in a secure location on school grounds. I feel this is vital to show our support to a congresswoman Congresswomen and men who back common sense gun laws as well as are able to come together to show that students care. While our administration has taken multiple security steps to ensure a tragedy like the Parkland shooting doesn't happen in our own town, I believe that more changes need to happen in the government nationwide. While there may be safety concerns about students leaving them, then entering the building again, as a young adult, I will be willing to comply with safety measures as the administration sees fit. In conclusion, I would like to ask the administration to allow students to gather on April 20th outside Weathersfield High School and peacefully commemorate the loss of students' lives from school shootings as well as show this country that young adults of this world have a voice that will be heard. Thank you so much for your time and I look forward to hearing your thoughts on the subject later in the evening. <clears throat> Thank you and I love hearing your voices. Thank you. Anyone else? Come on up. Well, David Karuk, 149 Broad Street. I, I hate to follow those two nice uh, girls because uh, I, um, I, my, my uh, views are not similar. Uh, I, I, I applaud those kids for, for standing up for a good cause, gun control, and to be honest, I stood up for that. I even wrote to uh, our, our senator, uh, Chris Murphy. Well, I sent him an email and never got a reply. But um, uh, I believe in gun control, but I don't believe taking school learning hours away to protest is a good idea. There was one this month. There's one next month. Was it going to be one every month? It, I think it's just a little bit too much. Uh, there was, I looked in... Uh, I remember when uh, Trump became president, there was a walkout then. Students walked out. And uh, to, I don't know what they were protesting. They're not happy with the president. And, and then we have another one. And it seems like there's, there's more and more protests. I think it's a little bit too much. And I remember one time the board uh, was, de was uh, debating uh, professional development time, teachers not being in the classroom, taking learning time away from the kids. Well. It, and that went on for a long time, that debate. I remember some of you were there. I'm thinking, well, this is taking learning time away from the kids as well. You know, they're, they're going to be out of class, and it's not going to be 17 minutes. It's going to be more than 17 minutes. 
So I, I just think it's, uh, it's this movement, it's, it, if, if it were not during the school day, it, it'd be a lot better. So uh, that's all I have to say, thanks. Hey, thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? Thank you. All right, Mr. Emmett, you have communications to share? I certainly do. Thank you, Mrs. Granado. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this evening before you, you have a motion to set the 2018 uh, graduation date. Uh, the proposed date of graduation for the class of 2018 is Friday, June 22nd, 2018, with all of the, the snow days we've had. Uh, the purpose of this action is to solidify the date for planning purposes for safe grad as well as allowing those families that have travel arrangements that they need to make um, to be able to make those. At this point in time, weather permitting, um, the expectation is it will be out at Weathersfield Cove at six o'clock. Um, as of this evening, for all of those uh, students in grades K through uh, 11 and 12 for that matter, uh, last day of school at this point in time is Friday, June 22nd. That will be a minimum day. Um, we're not digging into the April vacation. We've done that once in the past, and it was hugely unpopular. <laughs> um, and we're thankful that we can actually end on a Friday as opposed to having to go into that last week in, uh, in June. Um, at this point in time, looking at the weather, and again, if I need any support, I know where to go. Go right to Hammer to sixth grade. Um, <laughs> right now, it's looking as if um, we, we seem to be in the clear with regard for, um, for snow days. It's certainly been a difficult winter. Um, I want to let everybody know uh, over this past weekend, Weathersfield hosted the Connecticut, uh, Connecticut Music Educators Association Northern Region Middle School Music Festival on Friday and Saturday. We had 480 students from across the greater Hartford region, uh, including from right here in Weathersfield, in grades six, seven, and eight. They participated in the event that included jazz band, <coughs> choir, chorus, and orchestra. Our own Emily Caravella, music teacher at Emerson Williams, served as the co-chair for this event. And many of our music teachers across the district also attended over the course of the weekend. Concerts were held on Saturday at one o'clock and three o'clock and played to very large crowds. If I heard it once, I heard it probably three dozen times about how beautiful Weathersfield High School is and boy, I wish we had an auditorium like this in our town. Um, very, very nice uh, event and very, very well attended. So again, thanks to all of our music teachers for helping to instill the passion in our students. Very pleased to report this evening that uh, Silas Dean Middle School has been named a finalist for the Connecticut Association of Schools Middle School of the Year. Uh, mm -hmm. Cass will be visiting Silas Dean in the near future as part of the next phase in this process and we'll certainly keep everybody posted mm -hmm. as to the results. Uh, I want to make everybody aware of the fact that we had a shared services committee meeting last evening. Uh, it was decided by the committee last evening not to move forward with the combination of <coughs> custodial and maintenance. Um, given this decision, we will need to move forward with posting the position on the board side in anticipation of Mr. Bushy's pending retirement. As you're aware, we've anticipated savings with the new position moving to the town side, and we had adjusted our budget to reflect that. In spite of the position remaining on the board side, we still expect to recognize those savings. While the combination of the two departments is not financially feasible at this time, we'll continue to work with the town as we've always done. And finally, last but not least, I certainly want to talk a little bit about the, the walkout. There's certainly been a lot of discussion about that. And I greatly appreciate the students that got up and spoke this evening. And I want to talk a little bit about the, the um, the best way to say this is the challenge of being able to allow our students' voices to be heard with the balance of maintaining a safe and orderly school. That was a tremendous challenge. There were many issues around the fear of the unknown. How many students would walk out? Who would want to participate? One of the things that was interesting that the, the ladies talked about tonight was going to a secure location. Our original intent was to have that walkout go down to Catone Field, which is a secure location. We were unable to do so because of the snow. The idea here is not to silence students. The idea here also is not to create a, a level of chaos. We have to strike that balance. On the 14th of March, we had approximately 600 students that went to the gym for a moving ceremony that occurred. In addition to that, we had approximately 75 students that peacefully gathered at the door and walked out. We made sure that we had staff on hand to support those students in doing so. 
I also had several hundred students that decided not to participate whatsoever and remain in class throughout the entire event. So the way I look at it, we tried to meet the needs of all of our students. Frankly, when all was said and done, all of our students were accounted for and all were safe. And that's what we take solace in. The idea of moving forward in terms of what the girls had to say this evening, I think is something that we'll certainly take into account. And I see our uh, good principal, Mr. Moore, right here in the audience. And I'm sure that he's more than willing to speak with students about um, honoring these victims and having our voice be heard in an appropriate and safe manner. So with that, that's communications. Okay, thank you. Any comments on communications? Yeah, uh, if, I don't know if we wanna have a general discussion about this issue that <clears throat> these fine kids brought up, but um, I'd like to go on the record on, on this. Um, this is a very uh, slippery slope we're going down as a school system. And I mean that in one sense, that you have to decide if you're running a school where people can freely exp uh, express ideas and, and opinions and concepts within the school structure, in a classroom, topical, whatever, or during the obvious uh, time they have in between schools as they exchange ideas. I think we all agree that, that must be protected, absolutely. And we should foster that kind of interaction within that structure. But I, for one, oppose creating this ongoing disruption of schools to suit, albeit fantastic issues, but uh, that are selected in, in often in times by the general uh, national mood. Today it will be gun violence, tomorrow will be climate change, genocide in sub-Sahara Africa. Where does, it, where does it end? I think parents need to look at this as an opportunity to engage their children when they want to discuss issues uh, of import. Uh, they can do that in their home if they wish to express themselves. There's a green, town green, a town hall to do it, to organize. You know, being a citizen, an active citizen is work. It's not saying I'm gonna pop off every time I've got an opinion, I want the, everyone around me to stop and pay attention. You're, you're inflicting your, your, you may think you have a First Amendment right, it doesn't give you the right to stop everyone else's life, so they have to listen. And I think that's a real danger if we have to, have to go down this path of uh, stopping everything for a issue or a tragedy, however, you know, no one can say that what's going on here is not tragic, it is. But there's a time and place for that of mourning. People do it in churches, people go to the green. You know, that's all part of it. This, I don't think the school uh, should do anything other than create that, in, that environment within the school structure in classrooms with curricula. If, if you wanna have debates, you wanna set those things up for a time and place, I think that's all great. But to bring the whole school system to a stop and then worrying about, as you said, the principal said, how are we getting everybody around, people wandering off, people coming back? I mean, these type of things aren't 17 minutes. We know that. It's a whole hour, another hour and a half, and God forbid something happens in the middle of it. And what about the people that don't share the, the collective feeling that's going on in whatever moment we're having here? What do we say to them? Do you get your time afterwards to rebut? You really, you know, as a, you know, I, you all know my background in politics and everything, and I'm all for free speech, believe me. But I think as a school system, our, our role is to educate children, to keep them focused, to keep them thinking and, and ex exchanging ideas. But I think if we get into this long parade of activism at the expense of education, I think we're doing a disservice to the students and the parents. That's just my feeling. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Anyone else? I'd, I'd just like to follow up on um, on Chris's comments and and also the the issue here. And I, I completely, um, as a person who um, marched in the '60s and '70s, and our generation stopped a war. Uh, and so, if there is anything that um, I believe, and I think probably everyone here does, is the the right to. Um, uh, for for everyone to hear, hear their voice, her you know have their voice heard. Um, the the thing is, 
What I would love to see, uh, number one, is I think that there are some good ideas that, um, that both Sarah and Zoe brought up today. Um, what I would really like to encourage, and I, I know that Mr. Moore has, has been open to this, is for students who think that this is something that um, is important, and um, is that they meet with administrators. And that's not only Mr. Moore, but also uh, uh, Mr. Even, our director of security, um, and uh, other, uh, whether it's, I'm sure there are board of ed members here who'd be happy to get involved, and vice principals, Mr. Emmett, et cetera. Uh, one of the important things that I truly believe in is that um, it's necessary to get a lot of different voices and a lot of different takes uh, when and get people in a room uh, to talk about it. Uh, the other thing is that we have an opportunity here to um, create an educational situation and what could be positive. Uh, would it be helpful to have or a thought? Would it be? Would it make sense to talk about voter registration and? The idea of what they what can be done uh, on a positive to create a positive outcome, and um, there, and I think that's a big thing that ought to come into the discussion because there are a lot of things that students can do as well as others, and and it then does not have to be a political issue, and um, the other thing too is that that. Keep in mind that every that we as a board um, are responsible for the not only the education and certainly the safety of all of our students, but we're also the board of education that represents all all kids. No matter what uh, kinds of ideas they have, we want those to happen, and we really want kids to be able to express them and but have positive discussion. And that means that we all listen to each other and. Um, and, and we embrace other people's uh, ideas. There may be lack of knowledge. Maybe there, there, uh, there, uh, you know, fear of of getting too involved. Maybe they, there isn't enough information. So it would be. I would love to see us continue a, a discussion. Um, I would love to see us uh, turn such an event um, and anything I in any other forum where we can make this positive and we can really bring um, our population together and talk about it and uh, figure out how to make a positive uh, impact here. So I would really encourage um, the, the students uh, and or parents who um, feel strongly about this, and I know that there are lots who do, one way or the other, and I would really encourage uh, people to get together, uh, administration and uh, pa parents, students, to really talk and think this thing through, and let's make it um, something that is actually positive and really accomplishes something. So, thank you. Thank you, Polly. John? I, I generally agree with Polly. This is very much a teachable moment, both for the kids to learn from us about the democratic process and how one conducts this, this form of protest respectfully and safely, but also for us to learn from our kids what it is the world they want to inherit and how they would like it to be. We say all the time, we're teaching these kids to live in a world where the jobs we can't even imagine and here they are telling us that we would like to live in this world and we should not be telling them, no, no, it's, we know better, we're the adults, listen to us. We need to be respectful of their point of view and it's a very powerful one. It comes out of a very bad tragedy and I think we need to respect that and we let them do their thing and we step back. We are certainly capable of making sure there's sufficient protections in place and kids are accounted for and we can let them have their moment in a safe setting. Education is not just the three R's in a building in a room taught by a teacher. It's also how to learn to survive and exist and to prevent uh, tragedies or to promote points of view in a democratic society. And I think they're showing us that and we should be very respectful of that. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, if we fall behind in our instructional because we're holding ongoing demonstrations and, and teach-ins and talk-ins, what are we gonna say to the parents? Oh, I'm sorry, we were 
protesting gun control. We were protesting, uh, you know, the, the evils of corporate money and politics. I mean, I'm just saying, I understand you're trying to be respectful. We are respectful. But if you want to talk about responsibility, let's talk about the teachers and the parents talking to their children about issues, how to learn about them, how to exchange ideas. And when you want to go protest, I'm not talking about learning, protest, Take the time out of your weekend or during after school to go to the public square and protest. I think that's the proper thing we should be talking about. My only point here is that once you start negotiating when and where we're going to have public debates among students during the school day, there's going to be disruption. And those who do not share in those beliefs or want to engage in that platform have a legitimate complaint. They're there to learn. The curriculum that we work, you and everyone out there works hard to put together. And we can't lose minutes and seconds needlessly, I think, uh, from that core mission. I think we can certainly talk about, we have government programs and curriculum, if I'm not wrong, about, about the, our government structure. We have social studies about the history of this country, the political history, what Polly is talking about, uh, recent history. That's all great. I'm just saying is to take it to the next step where we are, um, again, assigning security, we're, we're moving people around to discuss whatever issue it is, whatever issue it is, you are, you're, just, you're, gonna create, you're not gonna have any semblance of meeting the goals of, the, uh, of, of this board, I think. That's my only, that is my only con concern here. Um, sorry, that's it. No, no, sorry. Anyone else? Okay, we'll move on with our meeting. And now, under action items, um, Diane, would you please read recommended motion 6A? Um, it's a great relief that I read this motion. <laughs> as, oh, this, is, this is graduation. The co-chairman of Safe Graduation. <laughs> Move that the Wethersfield Board of Education set the 2018 Wethersfield High School graduation date for June 22, 2018. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? For the longest day of the year. And we heard Michael earlier on this. Okay. So I have a second. Literally. Literally. Well, we'll vote all in favor. Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 6A passes. And John Morris, would you read motion 6B? Move the Wethersfield Board of Education approve the attached K2 social emotional learning scope and sequence. Second. Okay, any discussion? I did write some uh, comments down because I find this um, so valuable. Um, talk about it often as EQ as we teach our children social and emotional skills. And it's also that art of teaching where a teacher connects with a student. Um, so with this, we now have a uh, philosophy for our educators that the, they work with the children and they um, work collaboratively with the um, speech and language pathologist, the school psychologist, and the school social worker, and the teacher. And this is implemented throughout the year. You can have isolated lessons or it can just be implemented. Um, and now I, I really have to put my own two cents in as an educator. With this increased focus on kids' <coughs> social and emotional development, um, there is now a concerted effort in communities to revive that old tradition of recess. My own philosophy is that play encourages children to be more active, but also teaches them a host of skills, such as how to get along with their peers, control their emotions, and take leadership roles. We've also noticed, and we all have, the increased anxiety, stress, and even depression among our students. While well, recess time, called play, must be seen as a powerful tool in developing the physical, mental, and academic well-beings of students. I applaud the work of this committee in looking at our students as a whole person and not just viewing them through the lens of a test score. So we will continue talking about this. Anyone else with comments? I, I agree. I actually read, but I'm dying to know what read, uh, reading aloud giraffes can't dance. That's what I'm, I'm focused on. For the, <laughs> one of the things giraffes can't That's dance. Is it a book? 
No, I, I agree with you. I, I, I actually managed to get through m m most of it, but I, I loved that I saw the thing about uh, recess, and I thought that was fantastic. So that was yeah. my favorite book. But recess or, or no, well, <laughs> recess. Giraffes can't dance. She read it. Recess. I, I know it by heart. <laughs> okay. I was ahead, part Elaine. of the student services um, program that presented this on um, whatever date it was, um, it was March, Tuesday, right? Tuesday, March 20th. And um, they did an excellent job presenting this. And it is such a need in this system. We try to deny sometimes that we have children with social emotional problems. We try to deny that we have um, a population that's coming in more with more autistic children. And this program has been developed wonderfully for to help us deal with that issue. And I want to thank the teachers that worked on this. Mm -hmm. Good job. Anyone else on this? Okay. We'll vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? <coughs> Any abstentions? Motion 6B passes. Okay. And then we have our committee meetings. If I could just see yours for a minute. I lost mine. Okay, meetings held. We don't have anything there. Okay, meetings held. Finance and Information Management Committee. Kevin. Yes, we uh, the Finance Committee met prior to uh, tonight's board meeting. Uh, first discussion was our financial report for 2017-2018, which is coming to a close. Uh, right now, we're about eighty-nine thousand four hundred seventy-eight dollars over budget, uh, but the expectation is to come in at around uh, zero, and a lot of that is thanks to Makazaka and the rest of the team at the business office. Uh, the forecasting has been uh, fantastic for this fiscal year. Um, and we moved into discussion of the 2018-2019 budget cycle. We have presented our budget uh, to the town council. Um, on April 18th, we'll have a joint, joint workshop uh, between the Board of Ed and the town council to further go over any um, changes that uh, those two parties may have to that budget. Uh, we also discuss, discussed briefly the Shared Services uh, Committee, uh, which I'm sure Ginger will discuss uh, later regarding um, uh, Mr. Bushy and um, any savings that we can find in his position once uh, he retires. Um, and uh, of note, uh, we discussed the proposed elementary special education program uh, that we're looking to include in two elementary schools uh, in district, both at Hanmer and Webb, the ABA and STRIVE programs. Um, and this has gone through the um, Student Programs and Services Committee, and this, tonight we discuss it at the Finance Committee because we'll have, it could have potential significant savings on the district. Uh, in a nutshell, we're bringing kids back into districts that are currently outplaced, um, and we're teaching, teaching them Weathersfield students here in Weathersfield. Um, the uh, administration has targeted a select number of students that have the greatest probability to return back into district. Um, and there's significant, um, there's a chance that if successful, that we could expand upon the program um, and mimicking what other uh, districts are doing right now. Um, we, we've rec the board recommended, uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, the finance committee recommended to bring this to the board for a vote. Um, so we may be uh, scheduling a special Board of Education uh, meeting in the near future for full board approval. Um, and we actually had some items into other business. Uh, the business office sent out a letter to the Votex schools uh, due to our reduction that we put into our uh, next fiscal year's budget. And we discussed sending a similar letter to Corpus Christi uh, if the scenario outlays that we, the scenario comes to fruition that we may have to reduce that transportation um, item as well. And that's it for finance. Any questions for Kevin? I, ju I just had one mm -hmm. question. Um, the first one I had was answered, thank you, in this um, report. Um, in in the, um, the breakdown of the um, staff salaries that, um, that we were presented with, just a clarification, there were a couple of um, line items that uh, reflected credits and they um, that were referred to as retirement savings. Um, and I just was wondering if um, you could explain that because they're all different. Is a page number or any <laughs> It's one of these big long ones. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> In little tiny. <laughs> 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 
So we need it's someone. Uh, yeah. Do you know what I do? That's the report that went to town council. Oh, okay, yeah. And that's, that's a comparison of the 1718 budget oh. to the 1819 budget. Right, and right. We, we factored in certain retirement savings based on the individuals. So okay. it could be a 10, it could be a $15,000 savings based on step and level. Okay, all right. That was kind of what I was thinking, but they were different in amounts. Uh, Thank you. Councilor Hurley asked for an actual budget analysis compared to what the proposal was oh, okay years. oh good okay right. and then everything that went to town council also went into your friday packet last right week. right right okay thank you okay anyone else okay thank you kevin okay john moore student program and services committee yes we met on the 13th and very long ranging conversation as kevin mm -hmm. said we talked extensively about the strive and ABA programs at two of the elementary schools and what that could do for our district in terms of both helping our kids get out of some of these out of district places placements which are very expensive and help us address our budget but address those kids needs in a in-house in their community in their school with their friends in a much better way than we're doing it outsourced and that sounds like a very good idea we'll have a much broader discussion about that hopefully we can move forward on that in the very near future <clears throat> um, we had another lengthy discussion about kindergarten class placements. Mr. Verram was uh, presenting the idea of having flexible class assignments so that um, when parents get their kids' assignment for kindergarten in August or whatever each year, it's not a fixed teacher. We can then adjust the classes to be a little equitable in terms of the kids who are servicing it and dealing with the class size issues a little bit. We had a, another lengthy discussion about the social emotional learning curriculum in K through two, um, and we had lengthy discussions about some new courses at SDMS, including Makey Makey Music, which I just really love, <laughs> <laughs> as well as Math Explorations and Conversational Spanish. Um, we had a presentation on the interactive notebooks from Ms. McKeon, which was very cool. And uh, pretty much that's it. Great, John, Thank I just you. want to clarify that flexible kindergarten was three days. Yes. The teacher would be, um, the kids and the teacher would be flexible for the first three days of school. Right. Correct, okay. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Any questions for John? Okay, thank what is, you. Uh, what is Mickey making music? Is oh, you missed it. Banana? Yeah. You or? missed it. It's the, Matt Burlow brought in a spaghetti package of wires and a little tiny <laughs> circuit board yeah. that when you connect some of the wires to anything, he brought a banana. Yeah. So you can play music on the banana through the circuitry. <laughs> so the kids would kids that. make the circuit to be able to generate the music. It was really cool. Oh. Then, there, then there was coding involved too. It was oh. fascinating. Yeah. It was fascinating. Yeah. It really was something to see. Yeah. Anyone else for John? Okay, Polly, um, you have uh, minutes on the CREC meeting? Uh, I did not attend okay. and uh, I don't have minutes yet. So okay. I will do uh, that next time. Sure. Shared services, Ginger? Uh, Superintendent Emmett mostly covered this, but since I typed it up, I'm going to read it anyway. Um, Sorry. <laughs> the Shared Services Committee met yesterday afternoon on the topic of the combination of the board's maintenance and custodial group with that of the town. After a lot of great work by administrators on both the town and board side, it was determined that the combination would not save the town money, but would rather increase salary expense. With some regret for the potential synergies foregone, the committee decided that we should not go forward with the combination at this time. It was felt that the additional expense to the taxpayers at Weathersfield was not warranted, especially in the current economic climate. Superintendent Emmett will proceed immediately, if he didn't do it today, with posting the job for the board staff for a straight replacement of Mr. Bushy upon his retirement. Thank you. Thank you, any comments for Ginger? Thank you, Ginger. Okay, and the Academy Advisory, um, the Academy Business Advisory Board met last night at the high school. And this group is already shown to be a highly motivated one that wants to provide opportunities to introduce our high school students to specific careers, um, interests, and their passions. Mark Danaher, an Academy Coordinator in Newington, Manchester, and now Fairfield, gave us an overview of the academy model and some details of how it works for the students. Members then gave reports on Lunch and Learn, which has its first business guest, Dr. Guy Carbone, coming on Tuesday, April 3rd. 
Mike Lipka, another member of the board, uh, uh, this advisory board, spoke of his research on the mentor program. He's looking at the West Hartford model. And a career database is being created for use by teachers, advisory board, and staff. And also there was a report on industry tours for our students to visit nearby businesses. As the group discussed all these initiatives, the idea of a career fair for the students was also brought up. This is a wonderful group of Wethersfield people, business people who want to engage our community and businesses with education in a mutually beneficial partnership. Our next meeting is tentatively scheduled for April 30th. Okay, is there any, oh, no, we have meetings scheduled. We have a special Board of Ed meeting um, tomorrow. It's the retreat, and I do have to say, we're not going to the Berkshires. We go to the cellar at <laughs> Stillman School, <laughs> and we have a lot of discussions, which are really very valuable. And the Memorial Day Parade Committee is on 328 at seven o'clock. Correct, John? Okay. Madam Chair. The mm -hmm. Wellness Committee is going to be meeting um, next Tuesday, the 3rd, at 6 o'clock. That's correct. That's right. Stillman. Okay. All right. Any unfinished business? Okay. Again, anyone wishing to make a public comment, come on up to the podium, and may I tell you, you have a five-minute limit after you state your name and address. <coughs> Are there any board comments? Diane? Um, I applaud the idea of a career fair. Um, we're probably one of the few schools that doesn't have a career fair. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's very important. Um, also, I brought this up last year and it was kind of, oh, we don't have room, we don't have this, we don't have that. but. I really think that the day that the seniors have off for the SATs, we're missing a valuable opportunity to provide these kids with some workshops or some seminars on you know, how to interview, how to write a cover letter, how to write a resume, um, time management, um, financial, you know, basic financial management, those types of things rather than, you know, those are kind of the things that they're gonna need as they get into college. Um, and instead of just giving them the day off, we should, I mean, the high school's finished now. We have the, I, I would assume we're not giving SATs in the gym or the auditorium, but I really think we need to, um, next year, take advantage of that opportunity mm -hmm. to provide these kids with some, um, some things that they um, would be able to take forward, and I'd be willing to work on that, and um, so so we can get some good programs for them. I can't tell you how many times, you know, my, my kids and my kid, their friends would come over and ask me to help them write a resume or a cover letter or something like that, and I, I really think that's important. So mm -hmm. I hope we can do that next year. That's Diane, it's interesting you brought it up because that last night in conversation with Mark Danaher, that's a part of the academy model, mm -hmm. is that you prepare them for interviews, for their um, letters, for their for whatever is their next step. It's it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know, to that point, real quick about the letter, um, do we, as a in the guidance outfit, uh, talk to kids depending on their subject area about internships they can. Uh, access uh, in the whatever area they are so as you know in the state capital they have a lot of internships some municipalities of certain sizes have internships theater um, business all that kind of stuff do we sort of say to them that you know the best experience you can get before you get a job sometimes is, is get an internship and that gives you an immediate uh, something to put on your resume that actually has some weight uh, and I to say that because I didn't take advantage of it like I probably should have uh, when I was in age. I just cut grass for a while and then, you know. But uh, that's the last honest work I did anyway, so. Uh, but um, <laughs> seriously, that, that there's a whole, you know, universe of those opportunities for people mm -hmm. depending on what they want to do. Hospitals are always looking for young people to work in the hospitals and that kind of thing. So I think with your idea that something we might want to pursue. Just to, just to support that, Chris, um, <coughs> 
I've had a few parents come up to me and say, my kid's out of high school at noon. What could they do but go home and I'm at work, you know? And so they're asking, and you'd be more testament to that, that schedule, Diane, you have had just recently two high school kids. Because they're just, I don't know why, maybe they have mailed their courses done and they're out at noon and there's no place for them to go but to get in trouble or, and so a few parents said to me, can't we have something at the high school that says we could go even volunteer, they, th they suggested, if there's a volunteer responsibility that they hit at one o'clock, let's say, if they're out at noon. I, and I, I said I would bring it up to the whole board when they brought that, but Chris's um, comment made me remind, reminded me of that incident talking to the people mm -hmm. that, you know, either an internship or a, re, or, or a volunteer thing, something that covers that time when they're yeah. not, no one's home with them, you know, and, and they could be dangerously mm -hmm. in trouble or something. So it's yeah. something we need to, to look at. There's a lot of time off for these high school kids um, at, at noon or, or what, and we need to know yep. if we could fill that time in some way that's constructive. That's yeah. all I want to share with Thank you. Thank you. John? Thank you, Bobby. I just have a question to the superintendent. That's great news about the Silasteen Middle School uh, mm -hmm. as a finalist of uh, the, uh, when will he know what, what direction that'll take? I, I expect to hear within the next three weeks or so at this point, John. Um, they'll come out and they'll do a site visit, so I'm sure they'll be interviewing students, they'll be interviewing staff. Um, I don't know how, I know of at least one other school, obviously, that uh, is, is in the running. I don't know how many others are there, but uh, I just got the notification late Friday afternoon. That's so, great. Yeah, That's really be so. good. Congratulations to the Silasian Middle School. Um, the other question, well, not a question, because I'll be unable to attend the parade meeting because I'll be retreating in the basement <laughs> with the Board of Ed. But I just wanted to give a quick update uh, regarding the parade. Um, and I think it's really exciting. One of the things that we've incorporated this year as a parade committee is that we're inviting the sixth grade uh, students, uh, each sixth grade class in Wethersfield. So there's 14 sixth grade classrooms. And each classroom will be given a, a display board, the science display boards, and uh, they're gonna do, uh, whether it be the entire class or a core group of kids within that sixth grade class, and they're gonna do a, um, a poster board, what Memorial Day means to them. And those boards will be on display in the town hall, library, um, you know, and then they'll come to the parade uh, for display. So what we're trying to do is get them prepared for eighth grade when they can uh, write an essay, and a little bit more integration of what, uh, what the parade is, and we're going after the theme, and uh, I think it's a, a way to let the kids remember uh, in another way, another fashion, and to express it in a form of art. So we're trying to work on that. So I think it's, you know, we're, we're really excited about that this year. And we're also including Corpus Christi as well this year. Oh, good. Thank else? you to Sally, uh, to Stoli and I, have uh, worked on that and the sixth grade teachers, our teachers have really uh, come to the table. Thank you. Great. Anyone else? All right, um, I just wanna do a shout out to this new idea that we're working on. Actually, Paul Montaneri started it, but Mayor, Mayor Amy Bello and I are doing coffee with the mayor in the chair. Um, and these informal coffees have been in different Weathersfield hotspots on Saturday mornings. One was the Cove Deli, we did Comstock and Max Bebo's. But what we're finding is these very casual venues um, welcome townspeople to come and talk to either Amy or myself about issues or concerns that they may have. There was a discussion this past Saturday that these informal meetings provide an opportunity for people who don't want to get up to the podium but who have a, a concern to voice. Um, therefore, we're allowing more voices to be heard. It also gives Amy and I a chance to have discussions on issues that give and take is not available either at a town council meeting or a board of ed meeting. So, if anyone out there is available to join us, our next coffee with the mayor in the chair is on Saturday, April 21st at Panera's. So please join us from 9.30 to 11.30. Thank you, and if there's no other comments, we'd like to hear from Justin. Welcome back. 
Thank you. It's been a while. Yes. Um, the winter sports season has ended with 12 student athletes making all state teams. In addition, the athletic department sponsored bowling team made it to their state tournament recently, and unified volleyball is up and running to close out the unified sports season. WHS also recently held a successful Hoops for Heart student teacher basketball tournament, which donated all of its proceeds to the American Heart Association. That's all. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Justin? All right, then may I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Ooh. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, thank you all and good night. Mm -hmm. Just to see what happens. <laughs>